Did you know that every tree has its own name? In fact, it has more than one name. Not so much like Angie or Archibald, but, but a name related to the species. So hang on tight for a wild ride through the wacky world of tree species identification and how they're named on this episode of Believe It or Not. You know, the states around the Great Lakes are pretty doggone rich. Rich? Bill, do you mean like full of gold? Oh, no, 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 Georgia. Not so much gold, but lots of different kinds of trees. Oh, yeah. I think I heard something like 75 different species of trees just in Michigan. Yeah, and that doesn't even include the ones in the cities and ah. towns. But that begs a question. How exactly do we define a tree? Well, I think there are many definitions, but seems like most would say at least 30 feet tall and how about a single dominant stem? I can go with that. Sounds good. Okay. Is a palm tree a tree? No. Palm trees don't have woody tissue, which is another part of the definition of a tree. So bamboo isn't a tree either? Nope. Bamboo is a grass and it doesn't have woody tissue either. This is what we call a tree. Liriodendron tulipifera. Liquidambar styrosiflua. Populus tremuloides. Acer saccharum. Thuya occidentalis. Trium maximum. Eh? What? Did you just say trium maximum? Maybe. Okay, so that wasn't real, but every living thing does have a scientific name, or what we would call a Latin name. Yeah, and it also has a common name, and sometimes two or more common names. Like sugar maple, for example. Yeah, or hard maple. Or aspens, popples, poplars, they're the same thing. Wow, so yeah, every scientific name can refer to a species or sometimes a genus. Genius? You mean like Einstein? No, more like a group of species. So populus for aspens or quercus for oaks or acer for maples. So every tree has a first name and a last name. Yeah, only the last name's first and the first name's last. Oh. So this is a red oak. And its scientific name is Quercus rubra. Yeah, you know, I can kind of understand how it would be handy to have one name that everybody could use to identify a tree. Yeah, because it's oak in English and oku in Japanese and what, in something else in it's German? Ache in German or Roble in, in, in Spanish. Wow. And so it, it's, uh, of course, everybody around the world calls it Quercus rubra. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. But if you really want to learn how to identify trees, it's probably easier to start with the evergreens or the conifers. Okay, guys, we're ready. Go ahead and stand over by those pines. Uh. James, those are not pines. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and you know, not all evergreens are pines. That's true. And not all evergreens are evergreen. That's true, like tamaracks and, and cypresses. They lose all of their needles in the fall and they grow them back in the spring. <laughs> unless... Unless you just chop it off the tree. Chop it off and it's dead. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's true. You know, there's over there's there's about 20 different species of conifers that grow in Michigan in Michigan forests, and it's a good place to start with tree ID because they're fairly easy to identify. Yeah, and then once you get that under control, you can turn to the broadleaf trees. That's another challenge altogether. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So Georgia, what are you going to look for to help identify? broadleaf trees like these behind us here. Oh, well, we usually start with the leaves, right? Uh, having a little trouble with leaves right now in the uh, winter. We can't wait till spring for the leaves to come out. So what do no. you suggest? Hmm. Well, hmm. how about the bark? Oh, well, yeah, we could use the bark or maybe yeah. the buds. The buds, yeah. Buds yeah. are there yeah. or leaf scars. Oh, oh, okay. Or where the leaf scars are on the branch even? Yeah, they're on the twigs. We could use okay, those. Okay, the twigs. Oh, how about you know, form? Form, yeah, Tree how it's form? shaped yeah. or where it's where growing, it's the kind of site it's in. Yeah. 
Well, what do you say we take a look at some of these okay. ways like to identify broadleaf trees in the winter? We mentioned bark was one way to tell trees apart in the winter. You can tell that this tree looks a lot different from this tree. This is an American beech, or in Latin, Fagus grandifolia, and this is an eastern hemlock, or a Suga canadensis. Cool, huh? Ooh, take a look at this one. It's dark, curly bark. It's really distinctive. This is a black cherry, or Prunus serotina. Some people call this burnt potato chip bark because it's so curly, but don't eat it. Stick with the real thing. Hey, did you know that trees can change with age just like people? Yeah, you know, anybody want to take a bet what these three tree species are? Hmm. What do you think, Georgia? Uh, maple? Yeah, you're right. All three of them are red maple. Ah. The same species, but they look very different. Here's a young red maple. And a middle-aged red maple. And then an, older, an older red maple. And they look different. Pretty cool, huh? But it makes it more difficult to identify trees. Well, this is really fun. All these clues can really keep us from barking up the wrong tree. Ugh, oh, bad, Georgia, bad. <laughs> Sorry, but seriously, I'll bet there are some other ways we can determine a species too. Yeah, there may not be leaves on the branches right now, but there's something on the branches that are waiting to become leaves. Buds. buds? Leaf buds, that's yeah. right. They may be small, but they can be real helpful in determining which species is which. The buds even look different on the branches, don't they? Buds on some trees are located right across from each other on the twig, but others are staggered along the branch, alternately arranged. That's right, Georgia. And, and even though the opposite and alternate appearance may not help us figure out exactly what kind of tree it is, it is a clue to help us narrow down our choices. Okay, well then what's next? Well, let's take a look at the buds. They come in different shapes and sizes and colors, and, and they have what foresters call bud scales. Scales? You mean like fish? Oh, no, 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 not like fish, but it's a similar idea. They protect the bud while the leaf waits until spring in order to sprout. Hmm. So buds do offer a lot of clues about tree species, but what if the tree's so tall you can't see them? Well, that's a good question, Georgia. You know, if you can't see what's up there, maybe there's some clues on the ground. Even in the winter, you can look for oh. stuff under the snow. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, we've got leaves that's from last clue. year. Yeah, yeah. oaks on site here. Oh yeah, and look at this. Oh, that's a good one. A cap from an acorn. And acorn caps have distinctive shapes and sizes. So looking at that, we know there's some white oak around here. How about that? How about that? Now, Georgia, nobody can learn to identify all of our northern tree species in just a few minutes or even a few hours. Yeah, that's true. It takes a lot of repetition, practice, and getting out in the woods. Oh, that sounds like a great idea, getting out in the woods, my kind of thing to do. Yeah, and once you get to know all these different kinds of tree species, then you can start to understand forest ecology and how those forests work. In Georgia, I think that's where the fun really begins. Yeah.